What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a huge update around the Liverpool takeover process because the Liverpool chairman, former Liverpool chairman Sir Martin Broughton reveals talks with billionaire investors. He gave an extended interview to the Liverpool Echo newspaper and he revealed, he spoke to investors about a potential Liverpool takeover, potential Liverpool deal. So in this video you will get to find out all the details of what he said and also my reaction to it. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what kind of investors do you want Liverpool to be bought by and I want FSG gone, I want FSG out because if we stay with FSG our sell to buy model is outdated and we won't be able to compete with the likes of Newcastle, Manchester City, Chelsea and even Man United and I mean, imagine if Qatari investors buy Manchester United, they will have almost unlimited spending power with financial, even with following financial fair play rules because of Manchester United's huge revenues. So Liverpool need new, new owners, need new investors. And if you enjoy these videos, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are around, new around here and turn on the bell notifications so you never miss the latest updates around Liverpool FC. And uh, Sir Martin Broughton floated the idea of investing in Liverpool to a huge consortium, huge financial consortium with billions of pounds and he said I didn't speak to Josh Harris and David Blitzer exclusively, they have gone back to Crystal Palace but I did speak to the other people in our consortium and Chelsea I spoke to in case there was an interest in, interest in becoming a co-investor, not to acquire but to become a co-investor but they are already foreign billionaires with a pair in Chelsea or Kensington and they came to London fairly regularly and when they came to London it was to watch Chelsea so they are all Chelsea fan and not in the 68 year way going down there to watch them in the way I am but that is their team and they enjoy going down uh, there they were attracted by the idea of investing in a football team and Chelsea specifically when I approached them about Liverpool and I didn't approach them about Manchester United I would never approach them about Man United but the result would have been the same. They would say, well, I, I've got a pad in London. So that's not the type of person that is going to come in really at Liverpool and invest into the football club. So I wasn't keen enough to go out and search for investors, new investors again. I think if anybody wanted my assistance in it, I would be willing to consider it, but not actively. FSG hasn't harmed the Liverpool. Uh, that's what Martin Broughton said. Tom Werner lives in uh, Los Angeles. John Henry lives in Florida and Boston. They don't come to every match but they pitch up at certain matches and they are actively involved. Mike Gordon was over here on a more full-time basis in the past. You can make it work. Maybe they bought Liverpool because John didn't have a pad in London. He is joking. I don't know Mike uh, Gordon particularly well. He wasn't in the team that negotiated the purchase. He became an investor in New England Sports Ventures, but there was a smaller team that was negotiating for Liverpool. From the outset, I didn't know him, but he came in at a later, later stage I met him on a few occasions and I don't know him well enough but everything I hear about him is top class I have no reason to think otherwise he has, he has done a great job Mike Gordon quite early on he was the one who was keen to put himself forward at FSG as the one who could actively get involved and become a serious investor in Liverpool and FSG have taken in other investors into their operations so in some ways uh, they created and realized some of their value by bringing other people into FSG level rather than Liverpool level and you know some of those guys might come forward with a more direct investment in Liverpool at some stage and as part of Broughton's consortium for Chelsea as well as HBSE and Lord Co was in the Indian inter entrepreneur Vivek Ranadive who is the owner of the Sacramento Kings NBA team and HBSE are understood to retain an interest in investment opportunities with both Liverpool and Man United but they also have a relationship with institutional, institutional investors across sports part a private equity firm that has stakes in multiple US sports teams as well as being a partner of Liverpool 
owners FSG since 2021. And the Liverpool Echo has been involved, informed by sources close to the FSG sale process that Liverpool owners would like to bring uh, on board a partner that could potentially increase their interest into a full shareholding over time. So right now, FSG want to sell shares of Liverpool or a percentage of Liverpool and over time they would want to sell the club with a bigger you know percentage to that partner so right now they want minority investment and later on they would sell them the club in full time probably they want to safeguard the right owners take take charge of Liverpool FC in the future and Martin Broughton also said this about FSG they have been here 13 years now and they sold the Chelsea deal and I think certainly realized that prices were maybe higher than they had in mind of the increase in value they that they, they had during that time so why don't we test the market that's what FSG thought I spoke to Ter Tom Werner and asked him were they seeking to sell were they seeking just investment what was the objective and he said there isn't one we are testing the water if there is an offer that is a very high figure then we would be daft not to look at it if there is an investor that wants to come we would certainly be willing to look at that and we wouldn't be at all surprised if we didn't get either and we continued to hold it. We are comfortable with that too. So it wasn't that we got an exit plan. It was more than testing the, that testing the markets to see what is out there, which is really disappointing to see and hear because I want FSG to fully sell Liverpool Football Club. I want them to fully sell right now because I'm fed up of uh, the lack of ambition and uh, this model has uh, failed um, now it's pretty clear because Liverpool didn't invest in a midfielder four years four years one midfielder Thiago bought and nobody else yes we have invested brilliantly into the defense and into the attack but no midfield signing other than Thiago for four years is an absolute disgrace and uh, the only reason for it probably is the lack of funds available to FSG. And Martin Broughton is defending FSG, saying they have done a pretty good damn, damn good job of competing. The year they got 97 points, higher than anyone has ever had to win the Premier League and still not win it, was crazy. I think they have shown shrewder management. They have got a team with a fantastic manager, but a team that has competed at the top level for quite a few years now without spending quite at the level that some of the other have I would be astonished if they weren't concerned about the legacy they leave I don't think they are people who will walk away uh, having sold to the highest bidder and walking away thinking we've we, well we have got a great pass what a good deal let's move on I think their heart is in in Liverpool now and yes it might make sense to exit at some stage whether that is now or in 10 years time everybody exits at some stage but I think it is important to them that they are custodians of the football club and that role is passed to the right people oh my goodness Another 10 years of FSG ownership is a stuff of nightmares for me because I, I honestly don't see Liverpool winning uh, many big trophies under FSG because they just don't have the kind of investment that is needed for Liverpool to compete for the biggest trophies. Or we might need to again pull off some absolutely incredible rare finds in the transfer market like we have found Sadio Mane, Mo Salah for bargain prices, Bobby Firmino as well. And we need those 24, 25 year old players who can hit their peak in one or two years on the Jurgen Klopp and who are already brilliant, world class. Jude Bellingham would be brilliant, but is FSG willing to spend 120 million on Jude Bellingham plus offer him big wages? Let's wait and see. The summer will be a huge, huge, one of the biggest transfer windows of the past five years at Liverpool. And it needs to be, otherwise Liverpool will be not even competing for Champions League uh, places in the Premier League. Martin Broughton continues, I think uh, FSG will be looking for somebody who is thinking long term. Yes, I don't think they will be looking for someone who is going to spend silly money. I think Hen John Henry and Tom Werner would always want to focus on a gradual change in the squad. The year they brought Van Dijk and Alisson in, 
those were the two players that transformed the team. They filled two big gaps in the team. But I think those are the kind of signings that need that is needed and desperately needed. In the summer, we need to buy two of those players who can transform this Liverpool team. Jude Bellingham and, for example, Declan Rice, two players who would absolutely transform this Liverpool side, in my opinion. And, but they would cost around 200 million combined. I'm pretty convinced of that. And Martin Broughton also said something very interesting. Until Roman Abramovich bought Chelsea in 2003, I think you had a decade where 9 out of the 10 years it was Man United or Arsenal who won it. It was becoming a duo poly like Scotland. Roman came in and then made it three. And then Sheikh Mansour came in and made it four. Now Man City, Chelsea, Man United and Arsenal can win it. And then FSG came in without spending the same amount of money and they made it five. Now you've got the Saudis coming in now with Newcastle making it gradually six. So yeah, it, it could des definitely be six teams who could win the title at any given moment. And that makes the Premier League, of course, a lot more exciting and a lot more competitive. But it's also a lot harder for Liverpool to compete in. The reason Liverpool is worth what it is and the reason Man United and Chelsea are worth what they are is because the Premier League is the Premier League. It's, it's already like the Super League. It's the biggest league in the world financially. Whereas do you get six teams capable of winning the league at the start of the season? In Germany it's Bayern Munich or Bayern Munich. It, in France it's PSG or PSG. Spain, okay, you have three teams but the value of the Premier League has gone up because you have titans playing each other every week not just the El Clasico, so to speak. So the collective has become worth more because of the Sheikh Mansour's, Roman Abramovich's, the Saudis and Fenway's capabilities of keeping pace with them. And I think Martin Broughton also brought up something very, very interesting, uh, saying that there is no blueprint for uh, you know, a new owner coming in. I think what we did and what I think Rain investment makers did with Chelsea and the same with Man United. The nearest thing to a blueprint is a former process, but to recognize there is a parallel informal process. The former process, uh, process sets dates by which you want bids and if you want a bid to come see us, get an information memorandum, get the facts, go into the data room, look at the facts, etc. But you have to recognize that there are some bidders who don't want to go through that process. You wouldn't get Roman Abramovich going through that process if he was coming in today. He would be going down an informal route, an informal process route. And you can't say we are not going to talk uh, to you, Roman, because you are not going through the process. You have those two in parallel. George Gillette's uh, United Arab Emirates price, had he been real in 2010, wouldn't have gone through the formal process. You have the two together and be flexible to allow the informal to join up with the former at the last minute. But I would argue investors who don't go through the formal process shouldn't own Premier League football clubs. And that's the mega biggest problem. The Premier League doesn't really care about who owns a football club. They care about do they have serious money to make the league richer and to make the league more competitive. That's all the Premier League cares about. And whether you like that or not, that's the current issue. Maybe outside regulators, in individual and independent regulators coming in into English football, maybe that will change that. But it will be a pro probably a small, I mean a short, uh, no, a slow process, that's what I meant to say. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. I think that uh, Martin Rolton is hinting that um, FSG want an investor who is very serious about Liverpool and who is thinking about long term growth and long-term process and who is the right kind of investor and that's a good thing but uh, if Liverpool wait too long with, a, with a not investing into the playing squad this current Liverpool team will deteriorate further. Liverpool can still save their season if we beat Newcastle at St James's Park then the top four race is wide open for Liverpool but I don't think Liverpool have any hope of knocking Real Madrid out. We would need an absolute miracle because of our midfield issues. But if, um, you know, Diogo Jota and uh, Konate comes back, Virgil van Dijk is already back, and Jota, if uh, Jota gets into full fitness and he gets matched sharp, who knows, maybe our bigger, bigger firepower, bigger than before firepower, maybe we can outscore Real Madrid because I don't think we, we are going to knock them out by 
defending resolutely. At least we have to defend resolutely, of course, but I think we will concede goals. We need to outscore Real Madrid and that will be very, very tough. But I'm looking forward to it because in the Champions League we have nothing to lose. Many people already have written Liverpool off saying they have no chance against Real Madrid, the reigning Champions League winners. But nothing would feel sweeter than Liverpool getting revenge for the Champions League final by knocking Real Madrid out. And then Liverpool would get so much confidence from knocking Real Madrid out then that we could be flying until the end of the season. So it's a huge tie, something that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, the games will be next week, the Liverpool Real Madrid game will be next week. Uh, but on the weekend, the Newcastle Liverpool game is absolutely massive. Really looking forward to that as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.